Doesn't that look like fun? Hi, I'm Bruce Fisher and today I want to talk about how to wheel land a Citabria. While this video is geared specifically towards Citabria pilots, a lot of the concepts will transfer over more or less to other steel spring gear tailwheel aircraft. The Citabria I'll be flying is this 7 ECA with a Lycoming 0320 engine. Lots of power, at least for Citabria, and no flaps. Now first off, we should answer the question, why wheel landings? There is a fair amount of debate on this, but here's what the FAA says. According to the Airplane Flying Handbook, a wheel landing can give you better control authority in some wind conditions. Also, some airplanes lose rudder authority during a no-flap approach. Other reasons to wheel land? To preserve forward visibility in some airplanes or on narrow runways. To preserve the life of your tailwheel, especially if you're landing on pavement. And as far as I'm concerned, it's just pretty to wheel land. Whether you agree with me or not on that last one, the FAA requires it for your tailwheel endorsement. Flight training must include at least the following maneuvers and procedures. Normal and crosswind takeoffs and landings, wheel landings, unless the manufacturer has recommended against such landings, and go-around procedures. Now that does bring up an important point. Some manufacturers recommend their aircraft only land one way, three-point, or wheel. So, know your aircraft. A Citabra is certified for both three-point and wheel landings. One of the concerns some pilots have with learning how to wheel land is they're worried that if they push that stick forward on landing, they're going to get a prop strike. I've got two fellow Citabria pilots here, Austin and Amanda, and we're going to do a demonstration here of where that propeller is during a wheel landing. So go ahead, Austin, lift that tail up. And as you can see, we still have plenty of room here between the propeller and the runway. I'm going to help Austin get it even a little higher. Look how high we have to have the tail to get that propeller close to the runway. I can't imagine it would be comfortable at all to be rolling down the runway with the tail that high. So what's the challenge with wheel landings? Well, we have some habits to unlearn. Because we're used to flaring. We're used to pulling back on the stick during our landings. A wheel landing is basically a no-flare landing. Instead of a flare, it's a level off right at the runway in a perfect world. Since this world isn't perfect, you may wind up a little tail low, a partial flare, if you will. Or you may come in with too high a rate of descent if you're trying to plant the landing. Either one of those events can result in a bounce. Remember, no flare doesn't mean we just crash down onto the runway. This isn't a carrier landing. If you don't arrest your sink rate, you will bounce or wreck your airplane, depending upon how hard you hit. No flare means we're leveling off exactly at the altitude of the runway. So, if you're a little tail low, as you touch down, you will need to bring the stick forward. Again, this is counterintuitive because we're used to bringing the stick back during our three-point landings. Also, you will likely have a small bounce, which you can arrest by bringing the stick forward. Remember, for our Citabria, the ideal is wings level the same attitude you had on the takeoff roll. So, if you land a little tail low, nose high, that stick needs to come forward. Even if you didn't land tail low, the mass of the tail may tend to bring it down as you touch down, and so again, bring the stick forward slightly to counteract that tendency. Now, you may have noticed how often I'm emphasizing that you may need to bring the stick forward slightly. This is because stick forward is counterintuitive. It's counter to our normal three-point landing where we flare and bring that stick aft. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about those uh, bounces. I've got my high-tech training aid here to discuss. So let's say you come in with just a little bit too much of a rate of descent. In other words, you didn't level off exactly at the runway and you bounce. Well, now it's time to assess. Was it a little bounce? Just bring that stick forward and hold it there. Don't try to counter each bounce. Just hold the stick steady so you don't introduce a pilot-induced oscillation. If you have a medium bounce, transition to a three-point landing if you have sufficient runway, 
or go around. If you have a large bounce, don't even think about it, just go around. In all the above scenarios, a go around is almost never wrong. If there's any doubt, there's no doubt, go around. Now, there is a caveat to that statement. I'm assuming you didn't hit so hard that you damaged your airplane. If there's any doubt, there's no doubt, assumes that your airplane is still flyable and there's no other extenuating circumstances that make a go around impossible. Back to our landings. Of course you need to remember crosswind controls. Keep them in. We might be doing a wheel landing because of the crosswinds. Bring your power to idle not later than as you're touching down. And in most cases, landing will be assured much sooner than that. So hold your aim point until you're ready to level off at exactly the runway elevation. As the airplane decelerates, allow the tail to gently settle onto the runway, then stick full aft, just like in a three-point landing. You probably will not need to use brakes if you land it on speed in the touchdown zone. 94 Charlie, Gilbert Field here in Rio, Wisconsin, is certified at 1,092 feet. That's where I filmed these videos, and I'm not using all the runway without touching the brakes. Now, Obviously, don't be afraid to use the brakes if you need them. Brakes in conjunction with gently bringing the stick aft like a three-point landing can help you stop on a short runway. When you're learning, one technique is to do a couple of passes where you intentionally fly three inches above the runway in level flight without touching down. If you happen to touch down, that's fine, but the goal is level flight three inches above the runway. You're trying to get the picture of nice wings level, level flight, basically at runway elevation. After you do that a few times, now bring it down those last three inches. It'll almost be a surprise like, oh look, I'm on the runway. Ensure your power isn't idle and continue to roll, but still continue to control the airplane like it's flying because the tail still is. And the wings too, to some extent, especially in a crosswind. When you're learning, you may want to fly a slightly longer final approach. Not so long that you're a hazard to other airplanes in the pattern, but long enough that you can ensure you have a nice, stable approach to the runway. On any pattern, don't try to salvage a bad approach. Doesn't matter if you're planning on a three-point landing or a wheel landing, a bad approach more often than not results in a bad landing. Go around, try again, striving for a nice, stable approach to the runway. Last point. Know your airplane's operating manual. The operating manual for the Citabria I'm flying recommends an approach speed of 60 to 70 miles per hour, and it also recommends, quote, during gusty conditions, increase airspeed approximately 5 miles per hour above normal, followed by a wheel landing. So, for a stable approach, I'll be flying the Citabria at 75 miles per hour on final. That's comfortably above the 1G stall speed of the 7 ECA of 51 miles per hour, according to the operating manual. Okay, that's enough talking. Let's head out to our Citabria and fly. Here's a wheel landing as viewed from the ground. As you can see, the final approach is nice and stable. The tail of the Citabri is very slightly low, which is easily corrected with a stick forward on the rollout. Now here's the same landing as seen in the cockpit. Pay close attention to the stick. Notice that I level off at the runway and then very gently ease that stick forward just a little bit to maintain the attitude that I want for that nice wheel landing and rollout. Continue to fly the aircraft down the runway as the airplane slows down. Keep those crosswind controls in. As the tail settles down to the runway on its own, I ease the stick all the way back in my lap, just like I'd have it for a three-point landing. Here's another landing with a very small bounce.
Notice that I'm not fighting against that bounce. I ease the stick forward just like I did on the smooth landing before and hold it there. I don't want to get into a pilot induced oscillation. You can see me bouncing up and down a little bit, but the steel spring gear are absorbing the shock from the slight bounce. Here's a view from the strut of the airplane. Notice that the wing is basically parallel with the horizon the entire approach and landing. Also look at the steel spring gear and see how it absorbs the shock of the touchdown onto the runway. Here's an interesting perspective. How does it look from the tail wheel? For this particular landing, I have a strong quartering crosswind, and so you're gonna see that the left wheel is gonna to touch down first. This is a great example of when a wheel landing is really appropriate in strong crosswinds. This approach was also flown with a strong crosswind as well as very gusty winds. I'm working really hard here to maintain glide path and airspeed. I know it's hard to read my airspeed indicator, but it keeps getting back to 75 miles an hour, never getting more than about 5 miles an hour off of that. I'm using a forward slip here to maintain glide path and airspeed. Once landing is assured, I align the fuselage of the Cetabria with the runway and I start to gently bring the power back to idle. Pay close attention to the stick. I was working really hard with the stick to maintain aim point and airspeed on final. Now that I've touched down, I brought the stick forward just a little and I'm holding it there. Notice also that I'm holding my crosswind controls in as the aircraft slows down. How about a picture in picture view? Here you can see what it looks like from the outside as well as the cockpit view. The mass of the tail brings the tail down just a little bit on the touchdown, stick forward, levels the wings for the rollout. Here are a few more landings. See if you can pick out the characteristics of each. Is there a little bounce? Is the tail a little low? And yet in each of these cases it's a safe wheel landing. After the credits, I'll show a full cockpit view of a pattern from downwind through base, final, and touchdown. Note the stable approach. That's really key to any good landing is to have a nice stable approach. If it's not stable, don't try to save it, just go around. I hope this video will help you perfect your Cetabria wheel landings.
Thank you.